This is Selma Schimmel at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, the 33rd annual meeting of its kind here in San Antonio, Texas. And our discussion now moves to Dr. Andres Ferrero, professor in the Department of Medicine, the Division of Hematology Oncology at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. You're the program co-leader in experimental therapeutics and what you're working on is Please. really exciting. Thank you so much, Selma, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here, and um, it's a pleasure to be able to tell you a little bit about uh, what we are trying to do recently uh, with one kind of breast cancer that we call triple negative breast cancer. Um, as you know, triple negative breast cancer has become a real problem because uh, all these new developments in therapies apply to other types of breast cancer, but not to this specific type of breast cancer. And unfortunately, this type of breast cancer happens in very young patients. It tends to happen especially in African-American populations and Hispanic women. And unfortunately, it's a, a very aggressive type of breast cancer. Well, I understand that approximately 30,000 women in the U.S are diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. And let's explain what the triple negative means. What is triple negative? Sure. About 15 to 20 percent of all the patients diagnosed with breast cancer today in this country are triple negative. And it means that those tumors do not have what we call the estrogen receptors, the progesterone receptors, and they do not have this gene that we have found in some tumor cells called HER2 new. So the lack of those three is what we call today triple negative breast cancer. A logical question by a patient would be, why would that be so challenging? What makes that disease more aggressive? Logical thinking could be, oh, it's great that I don't have those features. Why is it such an aggressive disease? It's essentially because the treatments that we have developed up to this point for the treatment of breast cancer do not work in those specific patients. And that's what it makes those patients uh, very complicated cases. Uh, I have to tell you that even though that is considered a poor prognosis disease, there is still about 50, 60 percent of those patients that do well with the available therapies, but about 30 to 40 percent don't do well, and those are the ones that have the poor prognosis. What is the typical protocol of a newly diagnosed triple negative breast cancer patient today? The main therapy still is chemotherapy. And as I said before, about 60% of the patients with triple negative do well with the chemotherapy alone. Now, which chemotherapy do these patients receive? We do the usual chemotherapies, the anthracyclines and the taxanes in combination are still good agents for that percent of the patients. But the problem is that 40, 30 percent that do not respond well to the chemotherapy, and those are the ones that need attention and that we need to improve uh, our therapies and have new discoveries, new research, new drugs, new combinations of drugs that can improve the prognosis of those patients. And now this is your focus of what we're going to be talking about with you. Correct. Uh, that's what we have been doing. Uh, through a uh, big grant coming from the Susan G. Common Foundation for the Cure and the Triple Negative Breast Cancer Foundation that it has been called the PROMISE grant, we have been developing a new type of medication that induces the tumor cells to die and that we have found in the lab that the patients with triple negative breast cancer are probably the most sensitive population of patients to that type of, to that new type of drug that we are evaluating. Do we understand why this disease is so prevalent in this younger minority subset of patients? We really do not, but some recent data has been linking this triple negative breast cancer with some gene abnormalities that have been called BRCA1 and BRCA2. And those abnormalities in the genes, especially BRCA1, predispose some of the patients developing breast cancer to have triple negative breast cancer. But not all the patients with triple negative breast cancer have the abnormality. So explain a little bit about the mechanism of action of this particular compound. This new drug that we are developing, what it is, is a little protein 
that recognizes a receptor in the surface of the tumor cell that it has been called death receptor. So what it happens is that this little protein circulates and is able to find the tumor cell. And once it finds the tumor cells, it binds to that little receptor in the surface. And the binding between the protein and the receptor induces the cell to go in a process that we call apoptosis. That means tell, is sending a message to the tumor cell that says, please die, please die. That's essentially, in simple terms, what it happens with that medication. Is there, once you know the patient is triple negative, that is, fulfills sort of the, the, the criteria to suggest this drug could work. There's not a further cell sensitivity test or anything that goes along in this process? Or? That's a great question, Selma, because we, when we're trying to develop new drugs, a lot of the work that we do as a researchers is trying to identify futures in the tumor cells that will allow us to predict if the tumor cell will respond to that new kind of drug. And through the PROMISE grant, uh, we are evaluating, trying to find in those tumor cells what is that specific marker that can tell us if the tumor cell will die or not with the new drug. So when we speak about personalized medicine and tailored therapies, this is so representative of... That's exactly the case to talk about personalized medicine, that if I'm diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer today, I can check my tumor cell, check if it has this little abnormality, and that will guide me and tell me if the medication will work or not. What phase of research, where are you, you now as far as the research phase? This type of protocol that is sponsored through the PROMISE grant will be a phase two trial. That means we completed all the initial studies with the new medication and it will be in combination with chemotherapy for patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer. I, I find it interesting too that you've developed this novel imaging method using MRI to detect the early signs that cells are dying. Talk to me a bit about that. That's a great finding that it has been also, uh, uh, with the support of the PROMISE grant, we have been able to find that. And essentially, our investigators in the radiology department have been developing techniques that using MRI, the uh, technology, that allow us to see movement of water inside the tumor cells. And what it happens is that when you kill those tumor cells with the medications, that movement of water increases dramatically. And the MRI technology allows you to see that big difference in the movement of water. And that happens even before you will string the tumor. So in theory, and that's what we're trying to prove, is that if you detect that very early on, one week after you initiated your treatment, then you will be able to predict that patient would respond. I find it so exciting that we're moving into an area where, you know, we've talked about interdisciplinary you know, oncology and medicine, but now that we're using imaging technology to work alongside medical oncology, that's, it's still pretty uncommon. It's, I mean, we use these as diagnostic tests and we evaluate patients with imaging, but the idea that imaging is working in sync with the treatment is amazing. Yes, and uh, there is a lot of work around the nation working with images, trying to do those kinds of predictors so you can predict response early on. All right, so is this a global study or limited to the United States at this point? At this point, because this is still a phase two trial, will be limited to the United States. It will be conducted through the Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium. The Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium is an association of 16 of the institutions around the United States with expertise in breast cancer research. And uh, we run through the consortium these early stage a promising type of trials, and the idea is to enroll quickly the patients and obtain quickly the results so it can move later on in a bigger trial nationwide. If a patient has already begun treatment, 
are they still eligible for the trial or what's the criteria? Yes, the trial will enroll patients that have never been treated in yet in the metastatic setting or that they have failed previous treatments. As long as the performance status of the patient is good, the patient can participate in the clinical trial. If they are not at a university right now that's participating or if they are seen in the private practice and they're listening to the, or watching this video, what are their options as far as participation goes? The best option is to talk with your physician and ask the physician about clinical trials. And it's a good chance that the private physician will be able to identify not only this clinical trial with this exciting new medication, but other important clinical trials developing other drugs, and we'll be able to refer the patient to one of those centers. How many cancer centers are involved in this trial? The 16 sites will participate, so it will be open in 16 different sites around the and nation. Is there a, does Komen have on their website, is there a place someone can go to look and see where these 16 sites are? Yes, they can go to www.tbcrc.com and uh, then you can find uh, which are those 16 centers around the nation and you can find the trials that are available through the consortium and you can find the contact information so you can contact the people of the consortium with the different trials. Thank you, this is very significant. The first targeted drug to more effectively treat patients with triple negative breast cancer. It could really change the future. Of those patients, Absolutely. I hope. So hopefully next year at this time we sit again and you're going to give us an update? I promise I will. Thanks so much for the invitation. I thank you so very much, Dr. Andres Ferrero, professor in the Department of Medicine, the Division of Hematology Oncology, the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Thank you.